Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Managing Morgellons YouTube channel. On today's video, I have a very special guest with me. Her name is Kim, or is it Kimberly? Do you go by Kim or Kimberly? Kimberly. Kimberly. Her name is Kimberly. My, my, and... my friends call me Casey, so it's a nickname. Um, so it's Kimberly Ann Curran, and so my father didn't like the name Kimberly. He fought with my mom over it, so he, he always called me Casey. <laughs> So I've gone by Casey by friends and family, but Kimberly's my adult name. All right, Kimberly, thank you so much for agreeing to come on here and share your story about Magellan's disease. I think it's so important for people to hear. Um, so we can just jump right into it and I'll let you go ahead and take over and just introduce yourself and just describe a little bit your experience with Magellan's disease and how it's affected your life. Ew, my entire life. <laughs> I, um, it's a long story. Um, I kind of told my story on YouTube at one point, um, but I'll recap it. Um, I, I came down with this in 1996. Actually, I remember my very first lesion came out the the night of my college graduation from UCF. Um, I had a big old lesion come out right here on my my head um, and continued to come out. Um, was a very bright kid. I graduated top of my class. Um, was uh, recruited by Hyatt, one out of 100, to go uh, into their management training program. Um, and I, I kept getting these lesions. And I, I, would, I would tell my family, and of course they were, don't pick at it, it's in Pentigo, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, and then when I would go to dermatologists, um, they kept wanting to put me on antidepressants, saying that, that, that I was causing this to myself. But I, I wasn't. I mean, I didn't even have acne. I had beautiful porcelain Irish skin in high school. So it was it was pretty devastating. And then um, it, it was get kept getting worse and getting worse and getting worse. And so we, you know, multiple trips to Mayo Clinic. Um, won't go into the whole Brigham role, but Mayo is a complete uh, joke. I've heard rumors that apparently now they're starting to acknowledge it. But I, I was examined by 12 top doctors with a video showing the stuff coming out of my skin. Um, they looked at it. They looked at me, um, humiliated me, and then came back and said they could not treat me. So uh, was, did you know that you had Morgellons disease at, the, at that point when you were going to doctors? Back then, no, because it kept, they kept saying it had red and blue fibers. I mean, it was the closest thing that I thought I had, but I didn't have the red and blue fibers. Um, it, it, so that, you know, I kept saying, well, I don't have it. Um, and so I kept looking for an answer and kept trying to, you know, read and find stuff for an answer, but I couldn't get one. I kept checking Google, hairs coming out of skin, fibers coming out. I kept seeing it and I wasn't seeing any information and the massive brain fog. And then I would get um, like sciatic nerve pain all over. Like it felt like I had run a marathon, but I hadn't, which later I realized was just the buildup of this stuff in my like muscles and in my skin. And I mean, it comes out like crazy. So you're a healthy 18 year old. No, oh, no, yeah. no real health problems at all. You were talking earlier about how you're like the top of your class and right. athletic, and then all of a sudden, 19 years old, and you're getting pain all over, along with hairs and foreign right. material coming from your skin. Yeah, no, I I was at the gym. I read my entire uh, curriculum in college at the gym on the stairmaster every day at 4 a.m. Then I went to work. Then I went to school, and then I still took care of my mom. And yeah, no, they were quick to say I was cuckoo. I mean, I did have one uh, doctor at Mayo that stay, stated, he said, well, you know, the augmentin wouldn't have helped if, if she was picking at her skin. So I do believe there's something there, but we don't know what. It's like, oh, it just, you know, and this is 30 years ago, but what shocked me the most is to come back and think after 30 years that science got better. And now they're just as backwards as 30 years ago, if not worse. I mean, it, there's so many mental disorders out nowadays. I, I, I'm scared to know all the stuff I have. It's like, you know, I wouldn't live. It was, I, I just don't get it. I, I, it frustrates me. So Yeah, that sounds really frustrating. And that's what, I just can't believe you've had it for so long. I can't imagine 30 years. How did your family and friends react to, you know, this illness that you came down with? And um, yeah, like, how has that been with the relationships in your life? 
with the um, doctors telling you either they can't do anything for you or that nothing's wrong with you? Well, I, I shared that um, I started drinking. The depression got so bad. Uh, I mean, the worst was my mom not believing me because the doctors were telling her I was delusional. And my mom and I were really close. Um, you know, she had struggled with alcohol. I got her through it. And um, so this was really hard. And then she she wouldn't even look at me. You know, it was like it, she just listened to what they said that I was, um, you know, mentally. And I was causing this, doing this to myself. And she believed it, which was the hardest thing for anyone to go through. And then, um, no, some of my best friends in high school turned their back on me. Um, one I was really close to, well, I was drinking too. They just didn't want anything to do with me. Um, and of course it was weird, right? So when I would tell them about it and they really didn't want anything to do with me, it was only, you know, three years ago when I finally started coming into my own that I went back to my high school reunion, um, because I, I didn't want anyone to see me with all my scars. It was heartbreaking, and um, I'm so glad I did because I got to say goodbye to a good friend of mine that took his life this past year, um, someone who meant like the world to me, but um, I, I did, and I believe I made it to that that reunion um, to say goodbye to him, but I realized that all those people, they're all in pain as well for something, um, you know, so it was funny, the, the best friends that I missed that turned their back on me, you know, I wanted to reconnect with them I didn't reconnect with them but the friends that were my real friends in high school they were there and they're still yeah. here are you kidding me um when I was going through this the last uh, four months and I went home for my friend's funeral and um I got rallied around my girlfriend Lucy is a, a, a an esthetician um out in Winter Park Florida she's absolutely wonderful and she worked on me for a full day because she said, I treated that she did. She treated a kid that had it. Um, she did a lot of light work on them, and um, and you know the which I the the light works. It does work. It doesn't kill it, but it actually does make the skin much healthier and better, which helps you know with with like red light therapy. Yes, she did okay. that. She did an electrolysis on me, nice. like thing she did all this stuff to me and my skin she got it looking amazing for a little while um but it was it was really cool it was just you know they didn't judge me and and they missed the old me they didn't want me to be depressed right and they didn't want me to be you know down on myself and stuff um and they stood by me and that, that was when I kind of realized that that's that's the real friends right they stood mm -hmm. by me um, but they were, they were scared because I told them, I said, I'm in complete brain fog. Um, they know I had a, a really good job that I loved. Um, one of the girls I went and saw, she had actually gone to Colorado with me. That's where my company's based out of. I know you said you lived in Denver. Yay. Sage hospitality. Woo. Um, mm -hmm. out of Denver. <laughs> it's my, yeah. I love what I do. Um, I'm an auditor because of more gelons. So yeah, so delusional that I actually took because I did, you know, it, my brain did not compute why this was happening to me, this very real condition, horrific, and nobody believed me. You know, back then, the, the antidepressants and stuff was just coming out, so it really was being pushed, and I remember I didn't want to go on it. I didn't want to go on the antidepressants, so when they were telling me that this would help me, um, you know, when you're having these things come out and they're telling you it could help, you try it right? Because mm -hmm. you can't having these, I am had a, I was a beautiful kid, right? So you'll try anything. And then when I would try these antidepressants, I swear to you, they made me more loopy than I was. And then I started doubting myself. My confidence went down. Of course, the scarring, the sores, you know, I was a beautiful kid. I lost all my confidence and then I numbed it with alcohol. I mean, it was just like one trickle down effect after another. Did a doctor ever take the time to perform any kind of test? or biopsies because I did I had a biopsy that came back that said there was nothing found right which when that happened when they when Mayo told me that there was nothing there and I went home think about it all that all those doctors that said I was delusional and everything else like that's when I tried to take my life because I I was like my brain did not compute like I knew this was not delusional but yet they're saying I was and so all of it like compounded 
and it was like it was too much like I but once I once I did that I just went down a rabbit hole of depression drinking um, lost everything my home I had just bought a home how did how did getting more gallons like impact your day-to-day life well um I I was one out of 100 recruited by Hyatt I, I opened the Hyatt at the Orlando airport um, and I was part of their management training program. I actually, that's when the lesions started to come a lot. Um, I even remember one time someone in HR had seen me on the elevator and she looked at me and she said, you need to start doing that to your skin. And I was like, <sighs> I'm like, okay. So, um, so hurtful. it made it very, very stressful and it was painful. And here I was trying to be this all-star superstar management trainee. Um, and I was an emotional wreck. Um, I still worked out every day. Um, I didn't stop. It was my outlet um, that I did. And then um, I ate very clean. I always, I naturally had this weird, almost like your body can tell you what it needs and doesn't need. But like, even back then I had this thing where if I didn't eat gluten or stayed away from dairy, I felt better. And I naturally started to do it. Right. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy now that that's that's one of the things that helps me. Um, and I avoided all sugar, which was funny. It's like our body was telling me to to this is how you fight it. Um, like you just you didn't read any articles saying don't eat gluten, don't eat sugar. Like you just intuitively picked mm-hmm. up on that. Mm-hmm. Yep, I knew that when I had ate a bunch of bagels, I swelled really bad. Um, when I ate too much ice cream, my stomach would get upset. Um, it was, but it was funny because these, these things also were the stuff I craved constantly. Like, it was so funny. It's almost like my body was craving the worst stuff. Same thing with alcohol. Like, it wasn't like when I woke up in the morning, I would be shaky. And it was like this, I had to have a drink or, you know, or my body was going to go into a seizure or, you know what I'm saying? That's how everything I've been like affected by everything, all drugs, everything. I'm very sensitive. It's very weird how many years or about how many years into having symptoms of margallans uh, before you started kind of intuitively figuring out that diet was you know playing a role in how you were feeling back then they were calling it an eating disorder um but it it was actually at the time that as Morgellons was developing and I was getting the cyst, I was cutting that out of my diet. And um, I dropped a lot of weight about it. And everyone was saying I was anorexic and stuff, but I actually became scared of food, scared of it, like scared of eating bread and and scared of eating ice cream and um, cut out all the sugar. I was terrified of it. Um, and I, back then they were saying, well, you have an eating disorder. But to me, I was actually trying to protect myself, if that makes any sense. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm I'm drinking only juice right now because I I agree. I'm afraid of how I react to food. You were trying to help yourself and then accused of hurting yourself. They, they quickly made me as a mental case. And now that I I'm I'm getting to the other side of things and I'm actually realizing all this time I wasn't mental and some of the stuff they were giving me probably made me a little mental. Um I'm mad freaking pissed I'm like really pissed because I feel like had I not listened to these idiots way back then you know it, it's I was fine they stuck a label on me and I believed it but I got sober um by educating myself and talking myself out of depression and walking I you I know that they're going to find one day more gelons is going to be just like cancer right I know that's going to happen one day I'm hoping it's in my lifetime but I know that's going to have one day. So like, I, I really hope these videos they'll go back to and actually look at them from a scientific perspective of all the stuff we've tried on these support groups. Right. I mean, we've pretty much ruled out what works and what doesn't just by us talking as a community, right. Um, of, of how to deal and how to cope. Um, my, I, I, I wish I could grab everyone that has more challenge and just tell them, I mean, our brains are computers. Mm-hmm. What we say to our brains you're, you're programming, right? So like I told you, I'm going to retire. Happy year at the beach. Happy year at the mountains. And I'm saying it out loud because I'm going to make it happen. I don't know how yet, but I feel like I, 
I put my my stuff here on this earth and this is what I deserve and I'm going to be happy. And I'm telling myself sores, no sores, whatever. Um, I'm going to make it. I didn't think four months ago I was going to be here. I, I didn't. And I lucky of doing out activated charcoal. I got the mycelium mushrooms. You know, I've got some toxic stuff. I moved out of my moldy house. My brain is back. I have hope. So I've gotten out of that window. But trust me when I tell you, I get it. Like it's overwhelming, especially when your whole body hurts. You don't feel good. You don't want to eat. You have lesions on your skin. Everybody wants to go out and have fun and you don't feel good, but you have to make that excuse again. I don't feel good, right? You don't know. You don't know how you're going to feel from day to day, right? You hope it's a good day, but now I'm home again. Am I, you know, out in New York, you buy a lot of water, you're, you're by the ocean, you know, I was thinking, is that why I'm feeling so great? And now I'm going to go home and it's going to get worse again. Uh, the Benadryl, I, I swear that that was a game changer for me. Cause three years ago when this came back and I was having those creepy crawlies that just like grab you out of nowhere and it just hurts. I mean, I had the stabbing, the creepy crawlies where it was itchy all over and feel like everything was crawling on me. When I started taking Benadryl every night to sleep, two 25 milligram tablets, that has gone away. I have not had that in almost three years. Do you still take it? Every single day. That's the only thing that I religiously has, have taken um, that I feel safe in taking because I actually see a benefit from it. Um, yeah, I th that one was a game changer for me. Do you have any advice for... I don't know, someone who might just be in the beginning phases of like realizing they have gallons, you know, like maybe they have stuff coming from their skin, maybe they can't get out of bed, maybe they're having the brain fog, like, and they're just completely new to all this. Do you, do you have any, any advice for someone in that type of situation? Yeah, trust themselves and their own instincts and how they're feeling because um, I had to bet on myself. Um, from reading the different websites and, 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 and listening to what everybody was sharing, you know, I didn't have any money. I wasn't working short-term disability was not paying me, but I knew, I knew that this was going to kill me. I, I just knew it. And I did, I bet on myself, paid for a hotel room. I didn't have the money to do move my kids. It was actually my daughter getting a ring around her mouth that I think put me into the biggest panic because I was like, not her just did whatever it took to get better or to get myself to a point where I wasn't wanting to kill myself every day because I felt so sick or, you know, I couldn't stand it. I, I wanted to get better. I trusted my gut. I bet on myself that I could do it. And I believed in myself, right? It came from wanting to protect my kids more than myself, because sometimes we, we don't realize that, you know, they say, put the mask on you first before the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had to get better because they, they're all I got, you know, it, Shannon's only got me. Um, I had to find, and I'm so glad that I did. I got out of the mold and I got a little better. Is my Morgellons gone? No, but I'm able to do this interview and I'll take it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like know. taking like little steps, like where you can, like, you don't necessarily need to know exactly what Morgellons disease is before you start kind of looking at your life and your lifestyle and saying right. like okay like what is like not clean or healthy you know like you don't you don't have to necessarily target Morgellons but just getting like cleansing I think and detoxing environment and in terms talk to you on the sites they keep saying well I don't have the money to do it and I don't have this that and the other it's like I didn't have the money. I just bet on myself to do it. And like, if you don't have the money, there's a lot of stuff you can do to cleanse that doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Dollar Tree has some great activated charcoal products, the face wash, the toothpaste. Um, I highly, re I got the toothpaste. I got the face wash. It's all I wash my face with now. Um, I've got the internal activated charcoal, um, which I've also been told her helps with the brain fog. The mycelium mushrooms is, is expensive. It was like $25 for the bottle, but there's a lot of stuff you can get right from the Dollar Tree, right? Just to at least start detoxing, cleansing your body. Borox costs about eight bucks. You can get it at Kroger. Clean your filters in your dryer, make sure that's vacuumed out, you know, but I, I, I'm trying it all, you know. Just trying mm -hmm. to either me clean and the the house clean, something's working. 
something's working. Yeah. So. yeah, you have a really positive attitude. It's really inspiring. Yeah. Just to kind of like wrap things up a little bit, because I can see my computer's going to stop recording here soon. Okay. I do want to ask, um, like, what do you want people, what do you want the world to know about Morgellons disease? What do you wish and want people who don't have Morgellons disease to know about it? Uh, one that uh, it's absolutely horrible what our medical is doing and the stigmatism. I mean, I was such a good kid back in 19. They put a label on me without even really talking to me, asking me about my lifestyle, what I did. I mean, I, I worked out three hours a day and read my school books. I mean, I took care of my mom. I mean, it was, I was a good kid. It's like, you know, I could get it if I had mental illness signs as I was growing up or something. But just the, the, you know, they really need to do some investigation and ask people questions. Um, and also, if you're a family member or a friend of someone that has Morgellons, think of him like you do when you think about someone with cancer, because it's a lot the same, except for we know cancer's bad. We don't know Morgellons is bad, but they're about on the same level. You lose your dignity. You lose your self-respect. Um, you lose your brain. Right. And it's like, you know, it's, it's devastating. And then to have no one believe you, even if your mind can't go there and you can't believe them, just understand how bad it is and that it, it you know, and, and trust me, you don't want it. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it, it was the worst in the world when my mother didn't believe me, you know, my mom. Right. Um, that was the worst. And, the, you know, we'll get to the bottom of it. But it's funny. They have the HBO show out now about fungus and how it takes over like a zombie. Well, it does. And it changes mm -hmm. you in different ways. And uh, but it's it's not a TV show. It's real. And I don't yeah. know what I'm kind of scared of. But um, people, we have to bond together. We, me, you, everyone on the, on the support websites. I mean, I'm serious. We've got to to co co continue to support each other, no matter what you think caused it or what you think will cure it. Mm -hmm. We all need to join together, and because that's I think the biggest thing that I don't understand is that we have enough of us now that we have a voice, like it's a powerful voice. If we could figure out a way to bring us all together and stand strong and not be ashamed, this happened to us. We didn't ask for it. So um, yeah, no, it's, it's, I would love to see that within my lifetime. Um, and if, if not in my lifetime, oh, my kid's coming too. She's seen enough to, to do a few things. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so much that's a beautiful I think it's a beautiful place to end the interview and yeah I agree just um just treat each other with compassion yeah everyone you know so it doesn't you don't have to relate specifically with what someone's going through it's just have compassion and I think that's a really good message to to end this off with thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to come on here and share part of your story with me I know that we can only go through so, you know 30 years of having this I, I know we probably just barely scraped the surface of like everything mm -hmm. that you've been through but it really does mean so much that you're willing to like come on here and talk about such a topic of you know as more down disease it really is brave considering the stigma that we face and I I thank you and I know that so many people are going to be so grateful for you being a voice for them as well you know because so many people are still afraid to come forward there's nothing to be ashamed of absolutely nothing and do not let people label you or tell you you're mentally ill or think you need a pill when I start to see that where that's where someone's going during the support rooms I almost want to scream because you're not mental. This is something that's happening to you. See who you are after you battle it and you get a little better um, because it, it's just wrong. So, um, but no, thank you for what you do. This is so cool. Um, I, I just, I think the world of you continue doing what you're doing. Well, Dale.